What's going on everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here and moving on to another limit. So we got the limit as h approaches zero of h minus three to the power of two minus nine all over h. Now this one is actually pretty interesting because there's three ways to do it. And I'm going to show you all three ways and then I'll discuss some of the advantages and disadvantages to each of the ways. So the first way to do this is to just fully expand the uh, numerator. And in this case, fully expanding is actually not too bad of an option because this exponent is not too large. We're just gonna have to foil two brackets. But what if this exponent was like to the power of four or maybe to the power of six or something like that? Then foiling out starts becoming more and more uh, work and you also increase your chance of making a mistake. But in this case, expanding everything is actually not bad. So h minus three to the power of two, if you foil those two brackets out, you'd end up with h squared minus six h plus nine. That would be h minus three to the power of two, all of this, and then we got this minus nine still in the numerator. And this is gonna be all over h. So now notice that the positive nine and the negative nine cancel out. And now notice that what we can do is we could uh, factor out an h from these two remaining expressions, h squared minus 6h. So if we take out an h, we'd be left with h minus 6. This is all over h. And now notice the h's can cancel out. And we're just left with the limit as h approaches 0 of h minus 6. So now we could sub in 0 for h. Actually, that's one thing I forgot to mention at the beginning. Notice that at the beginning, we can't make a direct substitution. We can sub in zero for h because that denominator is gonna be zero. That's why we have to use some kind of method to find this limit. But once the h's cancel out, once we cancel out that h from the denominator, we can sub in zero for h, zero minus six, that just gives us negative six. Right, so expanding is not too bad in this case. That was pretty quick to get this answer. But again, the disadvantage of expanding is if this uh, exponent starts becoming larger. If it's to the power of three, maybe we're gonna do an example in the next video where it's to the power of three or to the power of four or something higher, then that expanding process starts to uh, take more time and you increase your chance of making a mistake. Okay, so that's method number one. Method number two, which is actually my preferred method, is to realize that this is a difference of squares. So if you remember, a difference of squares, if we have like a squared minus b squared, that's equal to a minus b, a plus b in general. Well, notice that we have h minus three to the power two minus nine. So notice that if we relate this to that, this uh, h minus three, that's equal to a, right? This a is like this h minus three, a squared, h minus three squared. And then we have b squared. So the b value in this case would be the square root of nine, which is three. So now if we take these expressions for a and b and plug them into that formula, the a value, h minus three, then we're subtracting b, subtracting three again, and then we have h minus three for a plus b plus three. Right, so this whole expression was to the power of two minus nine, the square root of that expression is h minus three, square root of this is three. So we'd have h minus three minus three, h minus three plus three. Right, so a little tougher to notice, more so a review from uh, grade 11 where we did this kind of complex factoring. But basically we could take this, rewrite it as h minus three minus three, h minus three plus three. And this is all over h. So a little tougher to see, but this method starts becoming more useful again when that exponent is higher when we can sort of recognize difference of squares or maybe a difference or sum of cubes like we're gonna do in the next video. So from here, 
all we have to do is simplify each of these brackets. So notice this bracket simplifies to h minus x, and then minus 3 plus 3, that nets out to 0, and we're just left with h. This is all over h, so notice that this is the exact same expression that we have here. h's cancel out, plug in 0 for h, we end up with negative 6. Right, so the second method, this method that I just showed you, is actually my preferred way to do it. Um, and then the third method is, I'd say the most complex way to do it, is to do a change of variable. So this one's going to be a little bit weird. So let's, uh, let's rewrite this one more time. So limit as h approaches 0 of h minus 3 to the power 2 minus 9 all over h. So I'm assuming that you watched my change of variable videos where you have to solve limits. And uh, usually we're doing a change of variable when there's a rational exponent, right? Like 1 over 3, for example. But you can do a change of variable here. The way you do that is uh, we're going to let a equal h minus 3. Right? We're going to let a equal this here. And so this whole bracket's going to be a, but we also, we have to have the whole limit in terms of a. So what we can do is we got one expression here. We're going to sub that in there. We have to sub in something for this h, and we can get an expression for h by just bringing the negative 3 over. So we'll have a plus 3 equals h, right? So now we could sub in a plus 3 for this h value. And then also we need to sub in something for as h approaches 0. Now notice as h in this expression, as h approaches 0, what's the a value going to approach? The a value is going to approach negative 3, right? If we plug in 0 for h, the a value is going to approach negative 3. So we can now sub in this for that h right there. Okay, so now if we rewrite our new limit, not in terms of h, in terms of a, we have the, as a goes to negative 3, this h minus 3, we're subbing in a there, so we'll have a squared minus 9, and then for this h, we're plugging in a plus 3. And so this limit and this limit are actually the same thing. They're going to give you the same answer. So we basically took all of these h values and uh, made a new change of variable, brought in a new variable a, and now notice that this is easier to work with than that because we can just simply factor that top portion to a plus 3, a minus 3, and this is all over a plus 3. And now notice that those cancel out. Notice we couldn't do a direct substitution initially because negative 3 plus 3 would give us 0. So we've got to get rid of this a plus 3. But when we factor the numerator, those cancel out. And now we could plug in negative 3 for this a value. Negative 3 minus 3, that gives us negative 6, which is the same answer that we got in methods 1 and 2. So three different ways to solve this. Again, expanding in this case is not too bad, but just be careful because once you get into larger uh, exponents, then that expanding starts becoming more and more work.